confidence, God, that he will not fail you. Old folks, I used to hear them say growing up, they said, there is no failure in God. There's a whole lot of failure in me. There is no failure in God. Whatever God is saying, um, the word, I, I think the word is immutable. It's God, God has the ability to change his mind. But God, normally what he says, he sticks with that. That ain't us. We wish for it. We flake it. We, we really never, we just all over the place. We just say one thing, and before you can breathe, we take it back. Amen. But don't let nobody hear you say you're an idiot here because that's racist. I'm going to say that. Native Americans have no problem. About black folks say something about it. Amen. I, I got to share this with you. You know, my wife finds stuff that she shares with me. And you know, this political correct, correctness thing has gone over the board. Now they don't even want you to say kill, kill a bird, kill one bird, or kill two birds with one stone. Say that so now you're supposed to say, you hit one bird with two stones. Yeah. Man, we both were going with a stone here. What in the world is a stone? You hit a bird with a stone, you might have hit it with a stone. Stones are hard and dry. It's pastry. Say that. It's something like it. Then you do a coffee or something like that. Y'all get that tomorrow. I'm just telling you about this political correct stuff, you know, and it's killing us, it's killing the church, it's killing the believers, we're trying to, we're trying to walk in two worlds, we can't, we really can't do it, but I'll talk about that later. Listen, you know, don't ever start nothing with children, that's why I don't like children, you start with children, you got to keep on doing it, because the walker give me all these words, I ain't saying all these words a day, <laughs> you better not fuck your eyes at me, you <laughs> say exactly.
somehow she bumped her head, and she wound up in another place with some golden slippers on, some dark ruby slippers on, and um, she went on this adventure trying to get to the wind, to the, to the Wizard of Oz, not to the wind, but to the Wizard of Oz, only to find out that the Wizard of Oz was a fake phony fraud who had him stuck himself with can arcans and we got stuck uh, there and, and, and was hiding behind a veil. You know, it sounds like our government. Hiding behind a veil, um, pulling the levers, blowing smoke. Well, you know where. But, you know, trying to get people to go for all kinds of crazy stuff. Then his balloon worked and he left them and went back to where he was and poor dogs and stuff there in, 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 in the land of Oz. But she eventually gets on my table in the story. But what gets me is, what, what, what draws my attention is her traveling companion. Her traveling companion. They, they like people in the church to me. The scarecrow. You know? Uh, who wanted a brain, but uh, didn't know what to do with it if he got it. <coughs> but when he got it, he became more like Einstein than just, you know, a regular person. He could then swear with the sauce he trying to win, you know, unless it does, I don't even remember. I don't remember the preamble to it, but I don't remember the end process of it. And, and then she had another friend, um, Thing. 
It's not always verbose. You, you, you know, so half the people that tell you they ain't scared, they scared. I mean, they really scared. When somebody, if somebody not qualify you, then I'm not afraid, they afraid. Because if you wasn't afraid, you would have said it. Just take, I'm not all of them, they just replace that I am. Now, this is the crazy part. There are a few things, a few times that I can ever remember really being afraid. That's the dangerous side, right? Because I'm, I'm kind of a risk taker, you know, so I, I'll try something. I got to try to just scare me, but it ain't just scare me just not to try. Okay? Y'all still with me? Yes. Faith is a risk. Yeah, sir. And I want to talk this morning about, from the subject, at the risk of faith, be courageous. Faith is a risk. It is a risk to trust God. You ain't never seen it. I ain't talking about that holy stuff y'all be talking. It is a risk to get up in the morning and put your absolute and total and complete trust in somebody you ain't never seen. When you got people you see every day, you can't trust. And they say they love you. We've heard that you love us. Has he ever told you? Now, I ain't, I, you know, I've been in this a long time, Pastor Kenny. I ain't never had many audible conversations with God. The ones I had, I do remember. Like him telling me to get either my way or the highway, because I will destroy you if you don't act in an obedient way. I've been looking at you for too much for you to act like you act. But I was at, 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 I was at the pinnacle of my life when I heard that. I tried everything. Nothing was working. And, and God gave me another chance. And, and that chance, I heard it. And that's why I got up off that back road that Sunday and went down the aisle. But I realized something. It was then that my, my faith kicked in. And, and, and when it kicked in, it began to drive my bravery. I no longer cared what the crew sitting in the building thought about me because I wasn't dressed for that. I know I didn't smell the best because I started doing what I was doing on Friday and it was Sunday morning and I just got home about 20 minutes before I got demanded to go to church where I didn't want to be. I had wanted to be there for some time because I was still mad with God because all I wanted her to do was see me graduate. Now, I'm saying stuff that y'all will say. Yes, I've been mad with God. As a matter of fact, mad with him for a prolonged period, a protracted period of time. Oh, yeah. And so how dare I then hear him and have enough faith, bravery, courageous enough, fearless enough to stand up in front of the congregation try to help somebody get right now. In order to get to where you want to be, you got to stop worrying about what folk think about you. You got to exercise a little bit of faith. You got to get your hips up and walk down the aisle and tell God you're sorry. Amen. Ain't nothing going to change in your life till you do. Amen. Now, I ain't saying that God make you hurt, but I think he can turn to the elders, elders to make you hurt. He can bring to your remembrance just what it's like to be without him. Uh -huh. he's, not a, he's not a pitiful God, but he is a God of wrath. And that's the God we don't never talk about. We don't never talk about the God that made the sun stay out longer just so Israel could wear out her enemies. We don't never talk about the God that said, go into the enemy's camp, get everything moving. Oh, we like the God of peace. But I, I'm not convinced that Martin King was truly a pacifist. I'm really not convinced. Because uh, when they started shooting at his house, they said Martin bought a gun. Thank God for Martin. He is good. That makes me feel good at <laughs> Martin Luther King could have a gun out there. Because <laughs> the first law of nature, self-preservation. Let's, let's stop acting like we don't know law. You, you know, you know man law, no God law. So first law, human nature, self-preservation. Anybody tell you they ain't gonna defend 
there's uh, something wrong with it. If you back me up in the corner, I'm telling you, I'm going to hurt you now. Like my little cousin used to be when I used to come down south, they said, go on now. I ain't never said that here for all. I ain't going to go on there, man. Go on there, get up here for a book on your head. I had my cousin five ball grab me one time and I put that boot, hit me on my toes and he was on top of my head back. Now I understand you're going on that me. But in spite of running into obstacles, situations and circumstances like that, that would say you're going, you got to be willing to not only be courageous, you got to be very courageous. And when they come to your faith, you got to remember, your faith is not on review, it's under attack. Am I helping you? It is under attack. The more you pray, the closer you get to God, the more the devil raises hell in your life. And he don't do it in some little red suit with some horns and pitchfork. He sends people you know. And some of the biggest hell raises in your life is your kid and your kid, your family and your so-called friends. You got some friends and you would pop them and lose you to find God. The very relationship keeps you out of relationship with God. But you stand to come off. Because they know about you. Yeah. <laughs> Can I tell you all something? Yeah. I got up from the table last night and no one with my line but the door and walked away. Because they know 19, 20, 21 year old Billy had. Yeah. Half of them didn't know my real name. You see what I'm saying? They don't know what God has done for me. Okay. I ain't ashamed to walk away from nobody that knew me in my bag. Because if you knew me in my bag, that means you was dead. <laughs> you can't talk about my bathroom with that. I want to bring on my bathroom dog. Y'all told me that in St. Paul too. Y'all go to my bed, I got so scared. I said, Lord, have mercy. I know I'm gone. They will put me out now. Lord, you ain't going nowhere. Boy, shut up. I exposed you. And I say, why, Lord? He said, to humble you. I said, Lord, what? He said, didn't you read your past the scripture that I gave you when I called you? I said, well, I've been trusting the Lord all that. He said, no, what about five lines down? Know that the Lord loves you just now. I said, oh, yeah, I ain't read that, bro. I said, I'm going to be getting the dust kicked off me for the last five years. Come on, y'all. My point, anything that you're going through, you cannot call on courage from outside. You must call on that which is already in you. God has given every man a measure of faith. Woman, a measure of faith. He's also given you a measure of courage. The question is what you're going to do with it. That lion got a chance to go before the wisdom. I am the great and powerful wisdom of all. Ooh, I gotta run it, run it. What is it that I can do for you? Ooh. God doesn't ask you if you want courage. He puts you in places where your courage avails itself to God. Oh my God, I'm working on this thing. He didn't come to get it all out. He puts you in situations and circumstances where you have to be courageous and you don't even know you can be until yeah. you're done being. Right. Huh? Yeah. I'm going to pick on Helen Jordan. My team will tell y'all. Helen Jordan came up here and, and right before my preaching, she whispered something to me that she needed me to know. It took courage. But she know how I am before I preach. But I got enough respect for her knowing that she won't come. She got enough courage to put me to this podium while I'm trying to open my Bible, get myself holy and ready to preach, then I got to listen to what she got to say. Then I got to exhibit the courage that she needs to take time from putting my Bible in my hand to bring her her situation so that her courage might be, and y'all miss my point, everything he needed was in the little girl he was traveling with. Amen. That's right. Yes. Everything you need is in the God that you profess. <laughs> but you're scared to ask. What you think you're going to say? No. Read your Bible. Come on, Christian folks. The Bible says, 
you talking to God about your ship coming in and you were sitting on that same dock 50 years ago?
confidence. That's first of all. Second of all, if I gotta go through this and you ain't gonna do it right, then I need to do something else and you need to do something else. But I'm gonna give you, the host said, I'm gonna give you another chance. And I'm gonna even start saying, yeah, right, here we go. Fake hair, fake nails. 
Big body falls. <laughs> you know why? Because they don't have the courage. But they're immature. They don't have the courage to be whatever God made them to be. They want to be equal to their little friends. Come on now. And you know what? It ain't just in the children. We got grown Christian folks. There ain't got enough courage to be a Christian that God called them to be. They try to let up the other Christian and want to be the like, I don't care if you don't like me. Say it again, Pastor, because it felt good. I do not care if you don't like me. That's right. I love you. Amen. That's right. And I show up every week to show you how much I love you. Huh? But more how much I love God. And you'll get over it, but he won't. Now, ask me who I'm scared of. I'm scared of God. Yeah. Yeah. I'm joking. God saved my soul. That's right. If he saved my soul, there's a line in the Bible where he can destroy both the body and the soul in a place of his own making. That's right. Satan didn't make hell. God made hell for Satan. Come on now. And I know I'm right. Because he loved us enough to hang suspended between heaven and earth. And he died. And I'm gonna talk about God. I'm gonna talk about Jesus. Good. Let's talk about Jesus now. I don't know what's going on in that. He was a God. We were praying, but I think that was just for me. That was, yeah. that was to show me humanity, humility. I, I think that was just for me. Man, he said something strange to me. Because I think if you are the Son of God, you don't want to know the truth of God. Why do you tell me, Lord, if it's your way, let this cup pass by me? Well, Jesus helped me to understand something. Ain't nobody really ready to die. You can say you're ready to die. Yeah. yeah you, you, but that sounds crazy. Especially in 33, you ain't ready to die. Right. You just start to live. Yeah, and you know what? I got, I got, I got, I got courage because he prayed three times. And every time he prayed, he prayed it out front of the back, looking at his friend who was sleeping. That's right. I'm getting ready to make a point. Hold on to your seat. You got a whole lot of friends that are sleeping that you rap to about faith that ain't got a dead gum to. They've been dead so long they don't even know when they died. And you run into them. Pray for me. Be my prayer partner. I don't need you to be my prayer partner. I love you. I don't need you to be my prayer partner. I got a prayer partner. It ain't Jesus. That's right. She be sleep. I get out of bed. And my grandma moved up. I got a telephone in my bosom. That's right. That's right. I got a bosom. I got a telephone in my bosom, and I called King Jesus and had Jesus show up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. In the midnight hour. Yes, sir. There was a night when I was hurting so bad I couldn't sleep, but I got out of bed real easy because I didn't want to wake up and I go just sit. And I said, Lord, I ain't going to take no more of this pain medicine because that way ain't working. This motion ain't working. Hey, 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 this stuff ain't working. Lord, I need Dr. Jesus. Yes, sir. 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 God said, call Dr. Jesus. Yeah, yeah. I hear what he said. Dr. Jesus said, yeah, Father, who, who's in need? He said, where you might? Where? Oh, yeah, I remember that. I was over there last week because he was hurt about this time last week. And he show up. Yes, sir. Huh? Oh, yes, yes. And in order to show up courageous when he get there, before he get there and do anything, I start singing my song. I I try to 
Your job is to run around and scoop the field better than one of He said, Will you do it your way? I said, I will. And my way was, once I reigned over, I remember my roommate. He said, Get up. Yeah, I guess so. Don't lay there, you're making yourself look bad. Yeah. When the Lord brings you through, come on now. Don't sit back on the seat and do nothing. Because Bob and Bose brought him in the door. Yes, sir. <laughs> when 
show you how God works. Then the same master as he trained that saw his boy and said, Your name is Boats. He said, Is it Duke Boats or D Boats? How do you want to pronounce it? Your daddy, Robert? Mm -hmm. Come on in this one, boy. Sit right here. Don't say nothing. We'll let you know when we talk. You, you missed my point. God uses us as conduits to make way for other folks. That's right. And sometimes the folk that other folk are making way for, the folks that you made way for, well, that's why all the heroes in Durham and Atwater got moved. Come on, y'all. With Taraji and Kitty Henson playing Ann Atwater. Yeah. Taraji, my girl. She might be crazy as a She might be. Yeah. You won't figure out the young man over here who could have Taraji. Get you an old man. Like Bob and Essie. Get you an old man. The old man. You don't want no young man like me. I'm still crazy. Doors of the church. <laughs> see, y'all, 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 y'all see, Pastor, you messed up. But no, I didn't. I have to make you laugh. Sometimes I ain't sure about how you feel. But if I can ever get you to laugh, then I can sing my Mary Poppins song. <laughs> Spoonful of sugar. Uh, Spoonful of gospel. Help the message over there. And we need healing. And we need healing from the inside out. 